Hi, and welcome to the section of the Physics Tutor. This section we're going to begin to talk about sound waves, and specifically in this part we're going to talk about the speed of sound. So we're going to have this entire section dealing with what the speed of sound really is, talking in general nature about sound waves, and then off in the next section we'll actually write down the equation of a sound wave and really pick it apart, just like we've done for the transverse waves up till now. Right now we're going to focus on the speed of sound. So recall there, there are two types of broad classifications of waves, and we've talked about them um, in great detail so far. So first you have you know, the transverse wave, which is everything we've really talked about up till now. And that's just basically the, you know, the waves that, that go up and down like this. And they, they propagate like this. Transverse just means that the medium oscillates perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, just like a jump rope wave. All right. Second type of wave is uh, really what a sound wave is. It's the longitudinal wave. And we've talked about that briefly early in the course. But basically it means that the oscillation happens parallel to the direction of travel. So the oscillation of the medium is in the direction of wave travel. And primarily the, the, the biggest and most important longitudinal wave that you'll study is, is obviously the sound wave. Any kind of vibration in a medium is really a sound wave. So, but sound can obviously propagate in air, sound can propagate in water, sound can propagate through steel. I mean, it's just a vibration uh, of some sort. The easiest way, in, in my opinion, to understand what a sound wave is really looking like and how it differs from the transverse wave is to think about a slinky. Just like we talked about early in the course, you have this coil and it's called a slinky. And if I take and I just give a little nudge off to one end and stop, then I'm going to have a disturbance propagate through that slinky. And if I kind of do it over and over and over again, I'll have several little disturbances that propagate through. So if I could slow down a video of that, what I would see was that I would have periods where the slinky were ex expanded and then I would have some very tight periods and then I would have some more periods where it's expanded and then I have some tight periods and so on. So if I put in some some periods of uh, compression like this then what I would basically see is like here I would have like a clump of the, where the slinky was together and here I'd have like a little clump where it was more compressed and these little compression areas are going to be traveling down. If you can just imagine pushing it like that they're going to travel down and they may bounce off the end and come back but if the slinky went on and on forever they would just keep going on and on forever. Now it turns out that that is a compression wave or a longitudinal wave. The compression of the medium is occurring in the direction of wave travel. There's no up and down here there's no moving this up and down. It's only in the direction of uh, wave travel. And that's exactly the way sound waves work as well. Now, there are no slinkies in the air, I mean, obviously, but you have billions and billions and trillions of air molecules that are very close together, and uh, they bounce off each other, and they, they come into contact or are very close to contact, and they bounce off each other, push each other out of the way, and so on. So when I speak, my vocal cords are vibrating, right? Or if your t TV is in front of you, your TV speaker is vibrating back and forth as the electronics are doing its thing, and it's moving the, the air back and forth rapidly. So how does the sound get from me all the way to you? It's because there's trillions of air molecules between us, and I'm basically pushing the next molecule and pushing the next one and the next one. And if I could see all of the air between me and you, you would see, if I could kind of come off to the side and look at the, the, uh, the wave going from me to you, I would see um, periods where the air was more closely packed and periods where the air was a little bit farther apart. As I speak, I'm compressing little sections of the air, and those are traveling from me to you and those are hitting your eardrum. So if I could draw that, I mean, I, I don't really know exactly how to draw it, but I'll, I'll do my best to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. If this were, you know, from me to you, if this is like me and this is like you and there's some air in the middle here, right, what would that sort of look like? Well, I would have some period, some, some parts where the air was kind of less dense right here. And then, of, of course, I'm making sound waves, and so periodically there would be some very, very high density areas right here. See, I've got a lot more compression going on here. And then there would be some other areas where I would have some, some very light stuff, and then I would have some, if I had a, a, a very nice little